everyone, Brody here with our channel, Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. I have a new copy of Fisheries of Gloucester. It's a two-player only game where you are using your time in the game to chart out your course, sail with your boats, and catch some fish. Players will try to catch fish shown on preservation cards as well as land on islands on the board to get the most points to win the game. The game is designed by Steve Finn and published by Dr. Finn's Games. The game is six rounds long where you will follow four different phases. First, in the Take Ocean Tiles phase, you will flip over the top chart card and both players will take the ocean tiles shown on the card and place them in their own personal supply. This will give players more tiles to chart their course with. The second phase is Add Time. Players each have their own player board and will place their marker on the time track. The player going first will add six hours and the other player will add seven hours to their board. So time can be saved from previous rounds, but the maximum that you can hold at a time is 12 hours total. The third phase is taking turns, which is the bulk of this game. The player with the initiative card will go first and can at this time place it back into the supply. After the first round, the first player is determined by whoever ends the day first, which I will explain later. On a turn, you can perform one of four different actions. Some actions will cost time and will move your marker down accordingly as you use your time, and some won't. After a player performs their action, it's the other player's turn, and players continue to take turns until the day ends. Each player has a lobster and may discard that lobster to immediately take another turn, so you can possibly have a double turn when doing this. So let's go over the four different actions that you can take. Chart a course doesn't cost any time and you will place an ocean tile from your personal supply onto the board. It has to be orthogonally adjacent to a space with a ship. It must fit inside the board's grid and only on the calm water spaces. It can't cover a fish, an island, the shore, or a ship, or any rough waters. After a fish is removed, it can be placed on that space. The tile can be oriented in any way, and you are placing one tile per turn per action, although you could take multiple turns placing others. The sail action lets you move one of your sailboats. You can only move on ocean tiles placed with the charting course action, on rough water spaces as well, and island spaces and starting spaces. Ships move orthogonally, and it costs one hour to move one space onto an unoccupied space. It costs one hour to enter an island space where the ship will stay for the rest of the game, two hours to enter a space with another ship, and it may not stop on that space either, but it has to pass through to another space, paying the time to do so. And it will cost you two hours to enter rough waters. So really, moving a ship costs one action regardless of how many spaces that you move. Each player has a fleet of three ships, and there is a rule where you cannot move any of your ships more than the three columns past your ship furthest to the left. You will have a cardboard progress token to help you with this rule. Just place it so that your furthest left ship matches up with the ship on the token, and the arrow shows the furthest that your other ships can be. The next action, the fish action, lets you pick up fish. You will spend one hour to take one fish from any space orthogonally adjacent to any of your ships. Fish caught are placed on your player board. You can fish from different ships at the same turn, and you may fish from any space type that your ship is currently on. Fishing counts as one action regardless of how many fish that you catch. Each one that you catch, however, costs one hour of time. The last action is preserving fish to earn a preservation card. Now, these are worth points in the game, the main way to gain points in the game, and you may only preserve one per day. So with six days total in the game, that's a maximum of six cards to a single player. It costs no time to preserve fish, and you will discard fish from your player board, meeting the requirements shown on that card. If your preservation card has an action shown, then you will perform that action immediately. After taking the top card, a new card will then be available to anyone after that. Cards will show different requirements like three of the same type of fish or four different types of fish or one blue fish, things like that. The helm symbol represents points at the bottom of that card. It shows how many points you will score for preserving those fish. Now, as you keep taking turns and at any time during the start of your turn, you can decide 
to end your day instead of taking an action. If you are the first person to end the day, you take the initiative card and declare if you are going to go first or second during the next round. You will flip that card to your choice so that the other player knows. The other player can then continue taking actions until they decide to end the day for themselves. When this happens, each player will keep one ocean tile to use for the following day, and the remaining is returned back into the supply. After both players have decided to end the day after six rounds, then the game ends. If the chart card's deck is empty, then you will know it's been six days. Players will then add up values on their preservation cards and add that to the points from islands. Each helm is one point. The player then with the most points wins the game. And well, that's Fisheries of Gloucester. It's a game where you are racing to collect fish, but you will need to take your actions and use your turns wisely to take advantage of some of the actions performed by your opponent, as well as what you're planning. You will need to choose between getting fish to get preser uh, the preservation cards or deciding to forfeit one of your ships to stay on an island for points. And then focusing on the other ships, you know, to continue fishery. You will not, however, be able to ignore all your ships as you will need to press forward with your fleet to continue eastward. You will face rough waters, which helps you as you won't need ocean tiles to move onto those spaces, but they will cost more time to move onto them. You essentially are managing your resources of ocean tiles, the time to get fish, and moving your ships further out to get more fish and maybe get to an island to score some points as well. You can also play the game differently by flipping the board over on the other side and placing out islands and rough water tokens and fish in different places on the board, and this will be a new puzzle each time that you play the game. Just try to make it fair enough for both players to agree on the final layout. It's a quick 30-minute game. You are choosing between one of four different actions, and you'll need to spend your time in the game wisely because you will be limited with it. Try not to set up your opponent with ocean tiles for good fishing spots unless you plan to get there first and get the good fish before they can get it. Again, this is Brody with Let's Table It, where we get games to the table. Please like and subscribe to our channel. We are new and working hard to bring to you videos like this one so that you know if these games are ones that you want to get to your own table. Gloucester. 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 Gloucester.